intro to BitClout. Welcome everybody. I'm the host of the BitClout podcast. Go by the name BitClout Billy. Don't want you to know my real name. That's the cool thing about BitClout is you can be anonymous. So I'm going to try to walk you through just a bit, give you a little bit of an overview of BitCloud as it is today. Currently, this is September 2021. Platform's been around for about 150 days or so. Uh, actually, I can tell you right now, using a, a site called ProsperCloud, uh, September 19th is today. And let's see, we are the uh, BitCloud podcast. So I'll pull that up. Actually, let's look at someone like a uh, influencer on BitClout. Tells you a little bit about their uh, situation. He's been on the on the uh, platform for 195 days, so he was a BitClout OG, so to speak. This is Craig Clemens, influencer, and apparently has a lot of money. He's put a lot of money into BitClout, so we'll get into that later. He has. Uh, a coin price of $7,117 at this stage. So let's get into BitClout, let you know a little bit about this. It's going to be a little bit informal. If you listen to my podcast, you know I'm pretty informal and don't like to spend a lot of time conceiving things. So this video is going to be a bit of that. And I want to give you just a little bit about BitClout in case you've never heard of it and you're, and you're curious. So this will just give you a little bit uh, to go on. And we'll do more of these in a shorter form, bite sizes, so that you can follow along and learn some specifics. So we're getting to, you know, going to get to know a bit of the history of the, and the essentials of the clout, as many of us call it. And there's a little logo for the BitClout podcast. So now let's take a look at BitClout. This is what you'll see if you type in BitClout.com. At this stage, and we're supposed to have an update soon to have a whole new front end, but this is what new users will see. And uh, there's a couple of ways you can get involved. You know, if you if you press this button, you sign up, you can log in with Google, you can log in with a seed phrase, and a seed phrase is something we'll get in in detail in other videos, but it's the keys to your uh, account and have to be guarded with your life and uh, that this would be in a case where, like, if you already have an account, you would use that seed phrase to log in. You don't use passwords like we are accustomed to with most sites. You use seed phrases, which are a 12-word string of <clears throat> a 12-word string of a predetermined type of words generated by math. This is a blockchain. So, uh, or you'll see this where you can create your own. Um, account and you save these seed phrases and we'll get into the importance of this but I'll uh, emphasize it here you always never <clears throat> copy and paste these words never take a photograph and uh, you really just want to write them down and keep them in three distinct and separate places and safe from anyone's uh, view we'll get into those later <clears throat> so what is this crypto social network everyone gets their own coin you can find creators uh, to follow. Elon Musk is uh, the top creator at this point in time, and he's never even been on the platform. More about that later. And um, let's see, I'm trying to give you a, a, just a hint of what you'll see on the BitClout site as you engage with it. it tells a little bit about, you know, uh, it's, a, it's decentralized like Bitcoin. It's not a company and it's open source blockchain like Bitcoin. You can own a piece by buying BitClout coin called Clout. And here are uh, some screenshots and uh, you can create your own feed. Again, that takes you to identity.com or identity.bitclout.com. And let's see, learn more about its users. This is an important resource if you really want to dig in. It's called What is BitClout? And it is at docs.bitclout.com. And that'll give you all kinds of information from the development team of BitClout. And it uh, gets it in very good detail. And I also recommend anyone to read the vision of BitClout as um, it's viewed by the founders. All right. And so if you're interested, you can sign up. And again, you go, this is where it takes you. Now, moving on. <clears throat> so... 
I want to point out that, uh, and I have this at the bottom of every every little slide that I've created here. Bitclout clout is the currency, is a cryptocurrency. Do your own research. Don't buy, sell, or trade unless you're a dummy. Don't listen to us and make your own decisions. Never risk more money than you can lose and count on losing all your money. Not financial advice. 18 years and under are prohibited. So there's the disclaimer. And I think everyone knows what that means, but let's just suffice it to say, do your own research. I can't be responsible for your decisions. All right. <clears throat> what is BitClout? An open source cryptocurrency project and social media platform where users can buy and sell creator coins based on people's reputations. Sort of a stock market for clout. And when I first heard about it, I thought bit and clout. Clout really is that word that means it's what's, what do you come with in, in the form of your reputation? So when a person has clout, it's what sort of um, social cred do they have? Uh, you know, when a person is described as having clout, I mean, they maybe it, it implies they have money or influence or whatever. And and so, bit clout is a way to um, where everyone can you know buy and trade and sell the social clout of others. And uh, so, it's a pretty provocative project. When I saw it, I was pretty turned on uh, by the ideas of it, and for various reasons. One of them, and I'll, I'll just be very, very clear about it, is it is decentralized. It's based on a blockchain. Those are two things that are uh, vastly different from Facebook and Twitter. And even though it needs to be more decentralized and uh, less in control of any sort of central development team, which is to come, the idea is it should be censorship resistant and that you can say what you want and not be deplatformed. So if that's important to you, BitClout might be something to look at. And I, I believe it will be something that as it grows will become more and more attractive to people in today's climate where cancel culture is a big deal and governments are colluding. Well, let's just let's be clear. The technology, the technocracy are, you know, centered in, to some degree, uh, Silicon Valley is influencing what people are able to see and discuss. And we all know it. And so that's why I like the idea of BitCloud, because it's an opportunity for people to have their own platforms. So now moving on to uh, the next slide here, uh, which is just a duplicate of the one before, I guess. Okay, next one. History of BitCloud so far. It's developed by at Diamond Hands, or Diamond Hands is the handle this person uses on the platform. And he uses a, you know, pseudonymous or anonymous uh, sort of handle, Diamond Hands, implying, you know, he, he believes in the platform. He's holding, holding forever. And a team that he put together and then decided to put this blockchain project together and got some backing from Sequoia Capital, Andreessen Horowitz Social Capital, which is Chamath Palapatia's uh, fund. Reddit co-founder Alex Ohanian, Coinbase Ventures, which is, you know, part of the Coinbase group. Winklevoss Twins, if you don't know who they are, they were uh, the guys that uh, conspired with Zuckerberg to create Facebook. And, you know, allegedly he stole the idea, but they settled it and all. And Winklevi, as people affectionately call these twins, are pretty loaded with Bitcoin because they went in the Bitcoin direction years ago and, and really kind of went all in. So these guys are loaded and are big, big um, proponents of blockchain and Bitcoin. So the program, the, the BitCloud platform was launched in on March 24th, 2021. So where I say that was 195 days ago, uh, something to that effect um, from looking at Prosper Clout. That was, yeah, 195 days ago. Now, that doesn't mean that it wasn't being worked on before that. And so these uh, so these guys, Sequoia, Andreessen, all these early stage investors were kind of uh, brought in in the ver first genesis block of the thing and with under agreements to get a certain amount of clout currency for their investment. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, concern about how much they have. So go into this knowing that there are uh, venture capitalists behind this 
They stand to make a ton of money, but they're also putting a lot on the line to develop this. And if you follow this, like I have for the past hundred and, you know, basically 165, well, no, 175 days or so is when I got involved. Um, there's been an awful lot of developments and policies to demonstrate to me that they are moving as fast as they can to being as decentralized as possible and to uh, supporting this being taken over by, um, you know, the people, so to speak. So, and and it was uh, sort of, I you know, I started my podcast in haste. <laughs> I used to have the slogan created in great haste because I couldn't really, uh, I had heard about it on a, a clubhouse room and the next day I uh, thought, well, let me check it out. I heard uh, some guys talking about it again on another room. I was like, well, I'll check this out. And in reading the white paper, <clears throat> one of the things that turned me on was that the coin price would double for every 1 million clout coins sold. So I like that sort of scarcity built in that curve. So that kind of turned me on and I wanted to get involved early because early, you know, the earlier, the better. So, um, I started, of course I went to bitclout.com and, uh, this is what I found. You literally had this as a landing page. Welcome to bitclout blockchain. A password is required to access this node. So that was the user friendliness of the whole thing in the beginning. And I spent about a half a day just trying to get that password from people. Uh, got on, checked it out and thought, well, I'm going to try this and, uh, really loved what I saw and saw the potential. So I decided, well, I'm going to start a pod podcast that was on a Thursday afternoon. And by Friday afternoon, we had released our first podcast, which was basically me rambling kind of like I am now about it, but you know, it, with, with little to go on. So <clears throat> when this thing was started, it was very controversial for, uh, the main reason is they scraped Twitter for the top 15,000 accounts and pre-populated them on BitClout with associated coin prices. So Elon Musk was number one from day one. And <clears throat> I looked at it as a brilliant marketing ploy. Some of the people that are Twitter influencers were not so happy and, you know, created, you know, basically were like, you shouldn't be able to do this. You're scamming, uh, you know, that's a scam, blah, blah, blah. And other people, you know, like me saw it for what it was a great marketing ploy, but why would a Twitter influencer be, um, unhappy? Cause take a look at their coins, you know, everyone gets their own coin. So from day one, day one, Elon Musk had a coin and, and early on, I think the day that I signed up, it was, uh, here looking at uh, top creators, he's still number one, but barely, um, his coin price was something like thirty thousand dollars or thirty five thousand or forty. I can't remember. But even looking at it today at a twenty two thousand dollar coin price, he um, has a market cap of six point nine five and total USD locked of two million two point three one nine million. That's actual dollars invested in this coin on this platform. So. Um, here's what I looked at it as, and I was like, well, if, if he wants to go pick up his two point or no, he probably, I, I will get into this later, but however many coins he was assigned, which could have been, uh, you know, a third of that, there's a million dollars or so waiting for him to just, all he has to do is claim it and he can walk away with it, so to speak. Problem was in the early days, there was no off ramp. There was nowhere to take that clout coin and go somewhere. You could only just use it on the platform. So that was another one of the reasons that people were pretty upset. Um, uh, many of them called it a scam because the price of clout was, you know, well, that, well, the only way to get it was to deposit Bitcoin. You had to send Bitcoin to the, to the platform, which I didn't have a problem with and kind of viewed it as, Hey, that's a great way for people to, um, sort of adopt Bitcoin. And and if Bit, if BitClout really takes off and there's, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of users, then we're going to have an increase in the use of Bitcoin possibly. Um, later, they, in June, so th this thing came out in March and by the time June rolled around, they kind of changed their tune, created what's called a, and, and, and so early on it was again, the price of clout 
was supposed to double for every one million, which I thought was cool. But it wasn't going very fast, and maybe that's why they decided, hey, let's maybe take a different look at this. So they created the what they called the deflation bomb, and then just all of a sudden they had it set for one day on the blockchain. They changed the algorithm or the, the, the code, the protocol, to indicate that there would now be a cap on the supply. So there would be no more, almost no more clout created, leaving the approximate supply at 10.8 million clout. Another thing that turned me on, because uh, if you know Bitcoin at all, there's um, from the beginning, it was only planned to have 21 million coins ever mined or minted. And that's over like a 140 year period. So currently there's about 17 million Bitcoin. So right now, not even all the millionaires in the United States can own a Bitcoin because there's more, there's like 40 million millionaires or something like that so look at that for <clears throat> bit clout only 10 million that means only 10 million millionaires could ever own clout well today you could buy a clout for about 72 dollars we've seen it as high as 200 dollars. so <clears throat> that sort of changed the tune you know changed i think it changed what a lot of people looked at it as and simultaneous to that they um allowed they set up an API so that the clout coin, you know, which is the current, the native currency for bit clout to be traded on an exchange. And the first exchange to do this was blockchain.com. So you can currently at this stage, it's the only place that you can go trade it. And that provided the off ramp. So that's another thing that has made clout, not called a scam much anymore you, you know the, in the early days it was just countless people were like it's a scam it's a scam it's a scam you don't really hear that anymore you know this far along because so many things have been proven wrong to the people calling it a scammer and <clears throat> a scam and that you know things have been developed to sort of uh, counter their claims that it's a scam so more and more of that continues to be the case um, and we understand that coinbase kraken and binance uh, will be coming soon as places where you can buy, sell, and trade the cloud coin. So <clears throat> that is pretty important, I think. Yeah, and I think anyone would agree that's when a lot of more people will be exposed to it. And we'll see what happens. And so when it started, uh, when that first listing on blockchain.com happened, a lot of people were really excited. I was not. I mean, I was excited that it was going to happen, but I think people you know, naively thought it was going to go from a hundred and I think it was about 180 at the time that it was going to go from there to about a thousand or something crazy like that. But you got to remember, there's a lot of people that have been involved in this community that don't really have experience with trading and watching coins being launched on exchanges and all of those things. So as it turned out, it did go up to about $200 pretty quickly and then went down to a hundred, stayed there for a while. I you know, a lot of people were concerned that it was kind of inflated uh, artificially, I, I included. Um, that kind of went away and it's gone down into the 50s and 60s. Today it's at $72. I can't wait till the day when it's $20. I think it'll go for a short time at $20 after it gets on Coinbase. You know, maybe it's 30, maybe it's 60, maybe it's 90. Who knows? Do your own research. I'm just speculating. But, you know, then that's when you accumulate because, uh, you know, I, I personally think it can really, you know, a clout, could cost ten thousand dollars someday and the good news is is you know similar to bitcloud bitcoin which has eight decimal points behind a one you know if you've got one bit cloud bitcoin you've got one point zero 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 all those zeros represent an increment <clears throat> of bitcoin so eight decimal points uh, so the the smallest increment of a bitcoin is a satoshi and the smallest increment of a bit clout is a nano. And that's because there are nine decimals um, behind, you know, to the, to the right of, or nine zeros to the right of the decimal. So that means there's, I mean, what is it, you know, a uh, hundred million, what does that make it? A million, a hundred, a billion nanos per bit clout, I think. Because there's a hundred million satoshis in a Bitcoin, so it can be 
uh, you know, carved up or split up into a million increments, equal increments. And those nanos are what represent the sort of transactional um, increments that, that are used on the BitClout blockchain for um, doing trades and posting. So there are fees involved in almost any, any action you take on the BitClout bo- blockchain, but the fees are so minuscule you won't ever notice them. Uh, and that's pretty cool because look at Ethereum. People are getting just scammed practically, you know, not literally intentionally scammed, but they go in thinking they're doing a $400 transaction on Ethereum and they end up being uh, caught off guard with a $800 fee at some, you know, bizarre time. And some people have lost a lot of money that way. So fees on BitClout are, you know, notoriously very, very low and essentially unnoticeable. I've been using the the blockchain for quite some time and I just, I don't consider fees. It's just not an issue. So um, let's see here. Oh, by the way, Coinbase, you know, listing on Coinbase apparently is, you know, allegedly is imminent. Probably by the time you're watching this, it's already taking place. And so there you go. But Brian Armstrong from the president and CEO of Coinbase is one of the early investors on BitClout and is also has claimed his um, his creator coin and has made posts on the blockchain and all of those good things. So this guy who runs Spotify, you know, so there's lots of cool things happening. So how do you get your clout? You got to have at least a small amount of clout just to do anything. And I mean a very small amount. And um, now you can buy some with your credit card in addition to using Bitcoin. I think it's, uh, I've never done it, quite honestly. I haven't needed to, but it's from what I know, it's from what I hear from other users, it's very easy. You're using wire.com. And as of today, I think it is, as I'm recording this, you can also purchase clout with Ethereum via MetaMask. Or, well, actually, no, I think it's Uniswap. I'm going to put Uniswap there. And most people who use Uniswap are using a MetaMask wallet. Uniswap. All right. And so, there you have it. And... Moving on to the next one. So you can get some free clout. You don't have to do anything, you know, put your own money into it to try it. So BitClout will give you new users, I think it's 0.1 clout. So it's $11 at this point, which is actually more than 0.1 clout. It's probably more like 0.13 or 4 clout. Um, to do that, you uh, basically, uh, you do this. You're going to go to login, this identity dot bitcloud.com is going to pop up and you create your um, account you basically uh, you, you're going to want and th- I'm going to do um, I'm not going to do this you're basically going to write all of these seed phrases down r- these 12 seed words and then you're going to uh, you can print them off some people do you can download them you can copy them I recommend handwriting them on a good solid piece of paper in three different ones. Put those in separate places in safes or whatever. Don't want anybody to ever see those seed phrases. Now, um, after you're after you've secured those, you go here and then to verify that you've done it properly, you're going to have to retype those key those seed phrases in here. Once they are in there properly, this next button's going to turn. You know, it's not going to be. Light is going to be a normal color of blue like this over here, you know, where it says sign up. So it's going to, that's going to be your indicator that all the words are entered properly. You're going to hit um, next and then bam, your account is created. And so we'll do another uh, tutorial later showing you what happens there after that happens. But um, after you do so, it'll, you'll be given the opportunity to uh, get free BitClout. So I've got another account here that I've uh, started. It's a, it's a fake account that we did for one of our podcasts. And so you can see <clears throat> that you can um, buy your creator coins. You know, you can buy creator coins of other people. We'll get into that in a minute. You can buy clout. So you can buy with USD. This is where you're going to be taken to uh, wire.com uh, and it'll be converted to Bitcoin. And then into BitCloud automatically. 
or buy with Bitcoin. Anyone familiar with Bitcoin is familiar with public addresses. And so you're going to copy this and that tells your wallet that you're transferring Bitcoin from what wallet that goes to. So it's really like kind of putting it in the BitClout account. One of the BitClout sort of, um, it's not your wallet, it's the BitClout wallet that then there's an account called Green Got something. Uh, what the heck is that? I forgot it. Green Got's treasury or something. And that treasury then sends you your proper amount of uh, Bitcoin that then you can use to buy. So then you'll have an account that you know you'll have a balance of your bitcoin that then you can buy your clout later because you don't have to use it all right away like i've done it to where i've had a little bit of like maybe a hundred dollars worth of bit clout or let's say five hundred dollars worth of bitcoin that i've deposited and it does then come into my wallet which in this case this is called the megazord demo wallet so there's bitcoin that would would be sitting in there that is owned by a megazord demo account that then you can uh, convert to uh, Bitcoin. So you would be putting in the amount of clout you want to buy, or you can just press max and however many Bitcoin you have, you'll get that many clout according to the today's price. So up here, uh, you'll see, you know, 72, 75 is today's price. We actually have a little bit when, when, when we did, we did this for an episode to demonstrate some technology uh, so we transferred some money. And so, hey, we've got a little bit of money in there. Um, so that's two cents, or I mean, a 0 0.02 uh, clout, which is $1.54 USD. You can click here to get your free $11 worth, which this is where you can, uh, basically you submit to... Um, KYC AML or AML KYC any money any money laundering and know your customer protocols which is being um, demanded more and more from governments around the country so that's what they do with that but you don't have to submit to that in order to have an account you can make a completely anonymous account so let's see uh, so that's where you would buy your clout and then when you go do the free clout so there's different ways to navigate to get to that so that's that and after that happens you'll see like in this case we've got a buck 54 usd in the wallet here's the actual wallet that tells you um what you've received and uh, all that good stuff this was actually received from another um, a developer during that podcast to demonstrate it so um, next on our presentation, so we've talked about KM, KYC AML. So what are creator coins? Every account comes with a creator coin and some people have multiple accounts. They may have a personal account. Like I have one that I personally use. I have one that I started for the BitClout podcast. We have one for cloutbling.com, which is where you can buy a BitClout uh, branded and themed apparel. And so what if I sold those? What if I sold the BitCloud podcast? I would still want to have my own account. So some people have two and three accounts or more. Um, so, so every time you set up an account, it starts with its own coin. And anyone can buy and sell that coin at any time. So you don't, they don't have to ask you permission to buy it or sell it. So it does create some uh, randomness that people uh, new to investing or anything <clears throat> tend to be thrown by because a lot of people on this platform are just creators. They're creatives. They're artists. They're not concerned with buying and selling assets. And so the, there's a different mindset here that uh, sometimes people have a hard time navigating and thinking through. So, um, and the, the even stranger thing is these coins are bought and sold on a bonding curve, which rewards the earliest purchasers with the most coins. So it gets pretty crazy because you can buy your first coin for like two cents. And then when you buy your second coin, it's probably like 10 cents. And your third coin might be 80 cents. And your fourth coin might be $12. <laughs> and your fifth coin might be $60. And your sixth coin might be 
15. You know, it's that sort of incremental, that sort of uh, exponential curve. And if you sell them, then they go down similarly, you know, in, in an inverse fashion. So if you are holding a coin and someone sells, you know, at the top where it's most expensive, you get diluted, so to speak, and your coin price that you hold in that coin might be much less, you know, or the overall is. So that's something that people, you know, that makes it kind of fun, but it makes it kind of uh, interesting to think through. So um, one of the things to, to consider with um, your coin is the founder's reward. So everyone gets a founder's reward that they can change. So let me see. I'm not sure if I can do this here. Uh, looking at this demo account. I don't have we bought I'm looking at the profile yes so we did actually buy some coin so you have to spend about two cents to be able to change your um, what's the word I'm change your founders reward so here's the founders reward right now it's set at a hundred percent that is the default when you start the account and it used to default to 10%, but what that meant was you could start your account and some people had started bots that would look for new accounts being set up and they would swoop in and buy the first few coins, spending just a few cents. Well, now when you go, when you want to go buy your own coin and invest in yourself, you've, you're having to uh, pay in a premium because somebody unknown came in and bought you up. So that got to be a problem. So uh, about six weeks in, that was changed to a default of 100 and it can't be changed until the owner of the coin puts in a little bit of money. Also kind of takes away the bot action. So in this case, this coin is, uh, let's see, for that, I'm not sure how much was spent on it. Clout Megazord or Megazord demo account owns 0 0.5772 of their own coin. And then... If you wanted to um, buy more, I'm going to buy a little bit. I think we can do this. I'm not sure if we can do it. And there's a reason for that that's going to be difficult to um, see. I'll put uh, like a little more than a penny. So there we go. We just bought a little bit more of our coin. So now if we look at our uh, wallet, let's see. The price went up. Now the price is at 11 cents. And looking at uh, the coin here, creator coin, it's... We have, we've had 0.5, now we have 0.7. So if you keep adding more money, it's going to get you less and less of that coin. So it keeps costing more and more. So that's something that you've got to consider. And so if you look at some other people's coins, we'll look at high key. These guys bring on a lot of people. They're bringing on celebrities. Um, they own 63 of their own coins. Their coin cost $8,400. So that's over half a million dollars worth of uh, coins that they have. Now, if they sold all of that at once, they wouldn't get quite that much because it's sold back on that bonding curve and it doesn't really give them all of that, but it will still give them a lot. And there are ways to go calculate that if you look at uh, the uh, bit clout, the bit uh, prosper clout. And I think you can simulate a trade. So if I wanted to simulate a trade with high key and I wanted to, hmm, let me see if I wanted to sell. Um, hundred thousand. I might be wasting your time on this one. I'm going to simulate that. Oh, it won't let me do it. I got to do a positive number. So this would be if I were going to buy. So if I wanted to buy a hundred thousand, it wouldn't give me one fifth of the amount that they have. It would be uh, 
Well, I probably am going too far down a road here on this one. Uh, the coin price change would go up $2,500 a coin if I spent that kind of money. Is that right? It's been a, if I spent 100 bucks. So that's, oh, I see. This is if I were buying my own, I'm buying this BitPal. Let me do this one. Let me, let me start this again. High key, pulling this up. There's the account for high key. Um, actually, no, let's make it simpler. Megazord demo account that we've been operating in. Remember, it's uh, kind of a, it's, an, it's a coin price of 11. So if I wanted to simulate that using this Prosper Clout uh, demo thing, and let's say I wanted to buy $10 worth, or let's see, what would it cost for me to get one more? Um, let's see. To buy one, so let's see, how many coins do we have for that account? 0.7 coins. 0.7 coins. If I wanted to make that into one coin, I would probably want to put in about uh, 25 cents, maybe. I'm trading my own coins. That's going to... The actual coin price I'd be paying is 29, not 11. And the coin price would change from 11 to 53 cents. So that bonding curve, that exponential bonding curve, gets to be confusing. So a tool like this helps. But the coin in circulation would not be 0.70. It would be 1.55 coins now had been created. So if I were to put... So basically to buy one more coin almost, I would cost about 30 cents. Let me do 30 cents. So that adds almost a whole coin's worth. But to buy, but if I put in 60 cents, would that pay, take this number down, number to like 264? I don't think. I think it'll be a lot less. So let's put in 60 cents. So it's only another, you know, 0.3 of a coin or 0.4 of a coin. If I put in $10, would that, or if I put in $6, would that be a hundred or uh, ten times coins would I have 20 coins instead of two coins which is ten times sixty six dollars is six times sixty or ten times sixty well here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put in ten dollars or um, no six dollars uh, six dollars simulate that so I didn't get 20 coins for that I only got another two coins now, if I put in $60, am I going to get uh, 10 times 4 coins or 4.3 coins, which would be 40? I doubt it. I'm going to get actually much less. I'm going to still not even to 10 coins. If I put in $600, would that really ramp it up? It takes me to 20 coins. If I put um, $10,000 in, how many coins could I buy? That would give me 50 coins. You know, keep in mind, people are doing that. They're, they're putting in large sums of money. So when we look at Elon Musk's coin, uh, let's take a look at that um, on the platform. We have um, this account here. Wouldn't you know the trash truck comes to pick up our trash when I'm trying to do this recording? That's always the case. All right, so um, I'm going to look up the Elon coin, or I can just click on it right here. Now, he's not uh, claimed his profile yet, but the creator coin itself, he, um, he was rewarded with 43 coins when he started, and that was based on his Twitter profile. And each person, each uh, Twitter profile, uh, the top 15,000 Twitter profiles were uh, scraped, brought over, and populated here. So from day one, he had 43 coins uh, available to him. And those things have been worth sometimes, you know, three and four thousand um, dollars. Or no, I mean, 30 or 40, 60. I've seen it up in the 70s, I think, at sometimes. 
So <clears throat> millions of dollars available for him. Uh, but other people, these are anonymous accounts. These that just show public keys. Um, and that's kind of what your account looks like when you first start. You get this private key, this public key, that then when you spend just a little money, you can change your, you know, that two cents that you want to spend in buying your own coin allows you to then name your account. So um, in this case, we can see that some anonymous user has bought 175 Elon Musk coins at a market value of $3.83 million. So these are people that are speculating that someday Elon Musk is going to want to join the platform, claim his coin. Other people will come in and buy a whole bunch more and they can speculate on that. Now this person who bought this, these 175 coins might've only spent, you know, this doesn't say in the, this isn't based on the order in which they bought. It's just based on the amount that they have. So, uh, or the uh, proportional amount percentage that they have of the coin. But if this was an early uh, adopter that, you know, got in on day one, they might've only spent, instead of 3.83 million, they might've only spent a million. And so now they're, um, I don't want to use the word investment. There's their speculation, <laughs> their, their support for the Elon coin uh, is now represented as 3.83 million. So again, this is not financial advice. <clears throat> Uh, I'm just pointing out that there are what I call OG um, whales coming in. And we see those whales show up um, occasionally. Like these are, here's a list of top daily gainers. Um, let's see, that's not the one I want to look at. Uh, hmm, these are the top community projects. Gift Clout, that's one that's uh, really growing in popularity, but it's been around forever since the beginning of the, the platform. And it is, uh, was it very first was just designed to give people clout to get them started. And I think these guys gave away about $11 for every person that asked for help to get some clout rather than putting their own money in. So um, it was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Alex Ohanian. He's the guy from, uh, oh man, where's Alex from? He's uh, a Reddit co-founder. So this is actually Alex Ohanian. We know that because, look right here, he's got a blue check mark next to his name, meaning he's claimed his uh, reserved profile. So he's bought $27,000 worth of Elon coin. So real people putting real money into these things. All right, so what's next here? Well, we talked about the creator coin, um, founder's reward. So conventional wisdom is there's no magic as to what your, what your founder's reward should be. But a founder reward is the portion of each purchase of, purchase of your coin you receive, and it defaults to 100% when we, we showed you that, that's 100%. Um, like mine with the BitClout podcast is at nine. So that means that if you bought one, you know, if you spent a hundred dollars on the BitClout podcast coin, the BitClout podcast account would get nine of those dollars in the form of clout that, that, you know, the podcast could use to underwrite, you know, production of the show, for instance. Or let's say you're a recording artist and you have a coin and you set your founder's reward at 50% and people wanted to support you as a recording artist for every coin that they buy. Uh, so let's say someone spends $1,000 to buy your uh, rock band coin, then the rock band would get uh, $500 in clout that then, then they could use to, you know, translate or, you know, or liquidate into USD or, you know, Ethereum, whatever, use that to go buy, you know, spend it on recording or uh, studio time. Uh, but the holders of the coin then get, you know, their share of what that other $500 is to buy that coin at whatever price it is. And then they can share in the success or failure of the rock band. And that's kind of how it works. So the people set their um, founders rewards all over the map. 
Um, people, you can do it as many times as you want. You can change it back and forth. People have done really crazy experiments to, um, you know, they'll say, I'm going to set my founder reward at zero for the next 15 minutes. And then I'm going to buy all my coin, you know, so people could come in and buy, buy, buy that coin. And then the person who's running, you know, owns that coin says, and then they're going to take their money that they've made somewhere else or made off of the sale of their coin and reinvest it in their own coin. And now those people that have just bought the value of their holding has just gone up. So we've seen, you know, lots of incentives that people use this for all along and that's been pretty interesting so um and uh let's see and you can change your founder's reward you go to your profile and let's see i don't know if i can change this one in particular this is a Me megazord demo account is actually one we did to demonstrate that these guys created technology that allows us to have an, an account together we don't know each other but we would have to sign an agreement, sign a, a transaction uh, together in order to approve certain things. And I think changing the profile might be one of those. But if I wanted to change the profile, I'll go to update profile. I could say it's Megazord demo account one. And <clears throat> I can change the image if I wanted to, to, you know, uh, I could just pick a, pick a, uh, an image I may have on my computer and I'm going to set my founder's reward to 93 and update the profile. It does let us do that. So that's cool. And I'm going to change it back to 100. There we go. So, and then when I, you know, see that this is where we show the actual, you know, what account we're using. I think when I refresh the screen, it shows my new avatar um, for the account. So there you go. I can change the um, um, I can change the description and say and friends, <laughs> you know, whatever. I can add links, all kinds of good stuff. So that's pretty cool. So that shows you that. And uh, let's see. So again, there's many viewpoints on Founders Reward, and it kind of depends on what you're trying to do with your creator coin. Uh, you can buy others' creators' coins. So you search for their profile and smash that buy button. So let's go do that. Uh, maybe we can buy, maybe uh, Clout Megazord could buy a little bit of, um, who do we want to buy? We will look at the top daily gainers. Let's see. Let's go to Monica Rizzoli. I think she's a famous uh, NFT artist who's just joined the platform. So if we want to buy some Monica Rizzoli from, from this account, we'll buy, we can just buy a little bit. We'll buy um, 0 0.0005 of Monica Rizzoli coin. There we go. So let's review that purchase. And there we go. We just bought some of that coin. So now let's look at our wallet. And we can see that we just bought some Monica coin. It shows 0, 0.00 because remember, we just bought a fraction. But at least we own it. Own it. Um, that's that. I think that's pretty simple stuff. You know, uh, let's see. Uses of the creator coin. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's a new type of asset and the first tool for trading social reputation. So you can speculate on price or just show some love and support. And you, you see that. We see people that are on the platform buying because they want to increase their holdings and you know speculate on a creator, say, wow, I like what they're doing. It's early in their career. I'm going to uh, buy other coin early. Hope that it, you know, gets more traction that other people, you know, invest and that the price goes up and I can choose to leave that money there or I can trade it for another coin. You know, I can sell it. And when you sell it, you're basically selling it to the BitCloud platform. So like if we wanted to sell um, some of that Monica coin, uh, let's see, let's go back to our wallet in this little... Uh, arrow will buy or sell. This is what we're going to basically sell. We can also just send it. We could send that Monica Rizzoli coin to um, 
I'm going to send some to BitClout Podcast. I don't know if I can do this. Again, this is one that I might need to sign, uh, have uh, this person that set up the account with me sign that. Um, point oh zero zero. Must be less than that. So zero 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 four and huh, I was able to do it. Cool. So we've sent that over to BitCloud Podcast. It's so minuscule, it's worth nothing, but it would show in my wallet at the BitCloud Podcast. But you could easily just sell. And when you sell, it goes into the BitCloud. Um, it's it's sold back to BitCloud. It's not sold to another person. Like a piece. Of, like if you had stock, you could sell it. It goes to another person. It still has its value. That person owns it now. The difference with BitCloud is you sell it. It goes to the treasury, so to speak. You get that Bit clout not your coin you get your bit clout to represent it but now the price of your coin has gone down uh and then anyone else who holds your coin their 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 holding the the value of their holding now goes down as well so that's a problem that you know people get confused by is like if uh, if you uh hold 10 of your coins and other people collectively have bought five of your coins and now you control more of it and all of a sudden you say oh, i'm selling all my coins so that I can, uh, you know, underwrite my project, then the uh, you get the money for that. But now the because of the bonding curve, the people who were also holding your coin, the value of their coin now just went way down. And a lot of people call that a rug pull. Um, so you got to be careful with that. A lot of people say, well, at least let all your uh, coin holders know what you're doing and why. Or some people will actually say, hey, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm going to uh, liquidate my coins in 24 hours so that I can buy a boat or whatever, you know, buy some uh, recording time in a, in a recording studio. And then, you know, I advise you if you want, you, you've got an opportunity to liquidate my coins so that you don't take the hit. People do it all kinds of different ways. Some investors care about that and some don't. You know, it's uh, it's been pretty weird. All right. Um now, here's another cool thing. You can mint and sell NFTs natively. Lots of times people are, you know, they're on the they're on the NFT craze right now. People are buying and, you know, minting and selling NFTs on uh mainly on Ethereum-based uh platforms, meaning that it's all um immutably, you know, minted on the blockchain. It can't be changed and it's using Ethereum with high fees. With BitClout, you can create a uh, an NFT so easily, it's ridiculous. And then you can auction it. You can set a pra fraction of the price that you uh, are selling it for to go even to your coin holders to create a cash flow for them, even on secondary sales. So there's all kinds of things you can do. You don't have to just make a, an NFT that says, you know, here has a little, you know, crypto kitty that, you know, looks real cute and you can resell it and, you know, we all know that some people are making tons of money doing these things, but you could also use it to sell an hour of coaching or, you know, maybe an experience for your um, the person who's bought that or some unlockable content. You know, maybe it's a PDF uh, that explains how to use BitCloud. I don't know. You know, there, there's any number of ways that you can create <clears throat> one of those. Let's I think you can just create a post. So here's how I can create a post. I go to home. I can say, here's a test NFT for a tutorial. And I can add a photo to that. Let's see, we'll just use this. This is just a screenshot of the BitCloud podcast. And I can post that. And let's see, I think I can mint an NFT of that post. So I am press mint from the little three dots at the top, creating a single. I can create multiple editions of it. 
I can set the sale price at um, zero. I can, uh, you know, zero USD, or you know, maybe I want to make it at uh, point zero 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 one clout, and I can create a creator royalty. That means I would get five percent of that every time it's sold. I'm going to set that at eight. Coin holders of the Clout Mega or the Megazord demo account can get. We'll give them thirteen percent, nineteen percent. Well, it went to twenty-two. All right, I'm just clicking buttons. So on every sale, including resale, a customizable, customizable percentage goes to you, the creator, and your coin holders. That's pretty cool. That's not something you'll see on other platforms. And you can enable unlockable content. Maybe I could say that. I'm going to say yeah, and I could put in my unlockable content that, you know, if you hold this, you get an hour of me teaching you how to mint NFTs. Press mint NFT, and we've just created a, an NFT. So that's an official NFT minted on the blockchain. Anybody can come along and buy it. Maybe after you watch this video, you can look for this account, <laughs> Megazord demo account, and you come... Uh, try to buy it. I can close the auction on it later. There's no bids yet, as you can see. Um, people can add bids. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I don't do a lot of NFT type things, but uh, you can even tie this to real world things. Like we, our sponsors, cloutbling.com, and we've done a t shirt with cloutbling.com that's a limited edition NFT EE, as we call it, with. Uh, the BitClout white paper on the back and it's a limited edition tee that we actually were selling on the bonding curve we didn't really go over that big but you know we may keep doing it. it's kind of a uh, you know a little bit of gimmickry but there you have it so what uh, and so when you sell that NFT you can say the unlockable content is you get a t-shirt sent to you uh, and then that is always tied as an NFT on the blockchain to that t-shirt and so all kinds of cool things you can do with that. All right. Next on the list. It's the last on the list. What's the future in BitClout? Coming up is the... Re All right. So one th one of the things that's happening, and this is what really makes BitClout exciting, is the release of the BitClout code on GitHub. And that allows for nodes. And a node... You know, right now, one of the main nodes, or really the main node, is BitClout.com. And... That website, bitcloud.com, queries that BitCloud blockchain for data and then serves it up visually. But people can transact on that blockchain like they can transact on Ethereum. And the idea is that bitcloud.com is going to go away. And we're not sure when, but we think pretty soon. You know, the developers have made it clear that they intend to take bitcloud.com down. And then you'll just interface with the blockchain with any number, thousands, tens of thousands of nodes. So you could have, you know, the Bob node and you can just say, this is the Bob node on the BitClout and it's for users of BitClout named Bob. And we only serve uh, uh, content that we've procured from all the other Bobs on that wanted to join and use this. You know, that's a, you know, a really simple way of describing it. But, you know, ESPN could have a node for sports and they serve content on there and they only procure content for that. You can have a node for uh, Africa where all the people in Africa want to get uh, news and uh, communication revolving around that continent. Or it could be a small thing like, uh, you know, Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina wants their own node and, and neighborhoods there can have... Uh, a feed and content that's only having to do with uh, that area. Uh, or maybe you just like cats and you have cats.clout or whatever <laughs> as a website. And it can be an app. So there are already other apps and websites that are running their own nodes. And they have full access to the full fire hose of data served up by the BitClout uh, blockchain. But it can look like whatever. There's a cool one that only just deals with NFTs. I think it's called, um, oh, I'm going to blank on it. But it is just like looking at OpenSea or some of these other NFT platforms. But it's literally BitClout. 
So there's all kinds of things that can be done with it, and that's really the plan of the, the future of BitClout, is that the BitClout.com will go away. It's a clunky-looking um, front end. I'm probably going to have to redo this whole video soon because they're going to have a brand-new front end that's supposed to be way more cool and look better and smoother. So um, that's what that's what's happening, and I love the idea that it won't be bit clout. It'll be thousands upon thousands of websites. Just like today we have URLs for websites that work on the internet. Maybe someday soon we'll have uh, accounts on bit clout that represent what websites are to the internet now. So it could become the rails for web 3.0. Who knows? Um, we're going to have to see as it goes. So if you're interested, uh, we're going to be also having ref, uh, referral links. So we'll be adding referral links on this video. So we'll hopefully you'll be uh, clicking through on that. If you feel like you've learned a lot, you can uh, set up your BitCloud account. And I think the idea is that we'll get a little bit of clout and you'll get a little bit of clout. We'll all have clout and we can trade it. All right, folks, glad you could join. Hope you have fun.